Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and uh, Steve and I have our ongoing uh, book club that we've been having all year. And for the month of November, in the spirit of nonfiction November, uh, we decided to read ancient Roman biographies uh, written by ancient Roman biographers. It was an idea that I had, and I ran it by Steve, and uh, he really liked the idea, and um, asked me to choose. I had this idea of reading uh, a biography by Plutarch and then uh, Suetonius, uh, Julius Caesar, and then also uh, reading a biography of Galba by Plutarch and Suetonius. And I feel like this is going to be an extremely embarrassing month for me. Unlike talking about uh, fiction, uh, s stories that you read and uh, not knowing very much, but it's a, supposed to be a self-contained world and uh, you can talk about your Im impressions and what you think of the story. Nonfiction is, is, is totally different. These are uh, real events that have happened and real people that have lived. And I don't know... Uh, very much at all. I like to consider myself a Roman history buff, but I don't know anything. And the very little that I do, um, I, I can't talk about these things the way that uh, S Steve can or uh, Peg from the his history shelf. I'm going to try my best. Um, so bear, bear with me, because I don't know very much. Um, I chose Julius Caesar. Uh, for, for many reasons. One, it was uh, one of the few biographies that Plutarch and Suetonius both wrote uh, wrote about. But he's such a huge figure. Uh, everybody, of, of all the Caesars, I, I really feel like the only Caesar that everybody absolutely knows, or the first one that they learn about, is Julius Caesar. And for all the, th all the things that come to mind, uh, th this is a figure that was in the Bible. He has a, a play written by um, Shakespeare. There's the Julian calendar. Uh, there's the Caesar salad, uh, the Caesarian section. All, all, all of these things that are just part, part of what we know and think about when we think about Julius Caesar. As far as I know, he, he's the guy that uh, is the reason why we have all the other Caesars. It's Julius Caesar and then all the Caesars after them. They take um, his name for whatever reason, and I don't know that. I also think um, that that's where the word Tsar comes from, the, uh, the head of uh, Russia at, at whatever time. <laughs> so... Um, and also, how how hugely different uh, the opinion of Caesar uh, can be. Uh, I've, I I remember uh, being in school and hearing about uh, how Caesar was one of the greatest Romans that ever that ever lived. Uh, he was this uh, war hero and uh, brilliant. Uh, he wrote these. Um, uh, memoirs or, or books, his, his time, his military campaigns. He, he was his writer, and uh, for uh, uh, for centuries, students would be writing down and tr translating and learning Latin from from Caesar. I remember being in school, and the moment that you hear about is um, him dying, uh, him being murdered. On the Senate floor, and the way that it was described to me was that uh, there were traitors that um, all surrounded him and um, stabbed him in the back, and um, the, the the famous phrase uh, "it too brute," um, his best friend murdered him, and how terrible that is. This is Julius Caesar. Um, in the same breath. Uh, 
you, you, you can also uh, hear about or read how he was one of the worst traitors uh, in, in world history, Roman history, and, and uh, a, piv a pivotal figure in changing the whole course of Western history. It's fascinating. And, and so w which is it? W was he um, this great m military uh, commander and brilliant statesman? Or was he that man? Uh, was he a traitor and a charlatan? Was he was he building on this cult of personality? And of one of the biggest takeaways uh, reading um, Plutarch's biography of Caesar is just how incredibly. How, inc how much of an incredible, adventurous life that he led. Just unbelievable amounts of activity and just seeming like um, a wellspring of ambition. Uh, there were a few um, notable moments early on in the book in, in the biography, um, Alexander comes up uh, very early on. Uh, it's this moment where uh, Julius Caesar is weepy, teary-eyed, uh, reading a biography of Alexander the Great. And somebody comes up to Caesar, Julius, and says, you know, what, what's wrong, Julius? And he says, look, he, he has done so much by the time he, he, he was so young. He had done so much. You know, I, I'm doing nothing with my life. And it's almost like that Don Quixote m moment, reading all of these tales of chivalry and then just deciding that's what you're going to be. He was reading um, a biography or a story of Alexander the Great. All of those war campaigns... Uh, all, all the incredible military campaigns and all, all, all that, and seeing the glory, the 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 posterity of this larger than life figure that was left behind, and Caesar wants wants that. There's another moment when uh, he is in Spain. In a little town, like a little sleepy town in Spain, and uh, there's other Roman soldiers kind of joking that this little town has their own little government and a little bureaucracy, and there's different people that have different positions, and uh, kind of making fun of it. Like, how, how quaint coming from the Roman Republic into this little town. And Caesar says, I, w I would rather be first in this sleepy little Spanish town than second in Rome. And so early on, with those two things, the uh, uh, dreams of having the same ambitiousness and um, success of Alexander the Great, and also not taking second place, just wanting to... Uh, to, to be at the top, to, to dream about being a king. There's a lot of excitement in this book, in this in this biography. Um, it begins with a pirate story. Um, it starts, Julius Caesar is a, a, a teenager, he's having troubled um, relationships with some of the leaders of, of Rome, um, uh, Marius and Sola, and he has to, he gets in trouble for some reason, I can't remember, but uh, they, they don't like him and they're out for his head, and so he's running around and hiding, sleeping in different houses every night, somehow gets kidnapped by pirates on this little island, and he's still acting uh, not as a hostage, not 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 as a, a kidnap kidnapping victim, but still this um, uh, prestigious 
formidable, regal figure, and he's uh, uh, bullying people and telling, shouting out orders, and the the kidnappers uh, say we're going to ask this amount, this amount for your ransom, and he says double it, and he's giving orders to them and uh, saying like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hang all of you, and they think he's joking. The ransom gets paid. Julius Caesar uh, goes off somewhere. And then just comes back and has them all crucified. It's an amazing, larger-than-life, fantastical story. Whether or not it's remotely true, I, I, I don't really believe it, but it's a really good story. And he goes off... He has different positions in, in the Roman government, but eventually he goes off um, on these military campaigns. And at least initially, it's shown that he was um, like a natural-born leader. People looked up to him. He was having successes. There were uh, these battles where he should have lost and ends up winning. This goes on for like a decade. And the numbers are staggering. It's, this is all in Gaul, which I think is uh, like modern-day France, like that area. He, he's commanding legions that are uh, 100,000, 200, 500,000 troops moving all around. Uh, like a little miniature country where he's the king and they're all following him. And... It is brutal Re reading <clears throat> just uh, this sa savagery and the amount of people that are uh, dying, the losses on both sides. But you see this like stirring. I'm, I'm commanding hundreds of thousands of people. The, the, these military campaigns are building up the, the might and the territory of Rome. He wants to come back and be the ruler. He, he, he just sees himself as the, the, the natural secession, the natural order of things. Uh, he, he's making Rome uh, mightier and stronger and and bigger, the, the, the soldiers are um, the greatest soldiers that ever, ever lived, and all those kinds of things. And it does really seem like Plutarch is showing him in a positive light, not, not, not completely bathed in glory, but the idea was that there was a democratic government. And um, it's mentioned a few times that a, a lot of these positions um, rely more on uh, connections and who you know and who you're sleeping with and who you're marrying um, more than uh, policy and get, getting the votes and all that. There's all this kind of behind-the-scenes uh, shady workings and so <laughs> Caesar uh, invades Rome he just brings his legions in and runs out um, Pompey uh, he has to hightail it to Spain and th there are moments when we, uh, it's very clear that uh, th this is nothing but treason. Um, th there's someone that holds a position that's in charge of the uh, public funds and uh, Caesar's there and just says, like, we're, we're going to use all of this. And the the person in charge of the funds says, well, th this is public funds. It, it, it's not um, a available. And Julius Caesar is just like, well, this is wartime and now, now it's all mine. So he's in, in the wrong. It's very clear that he was in, in the wrong. 
Um, just something I'll mention, I'm going out of order, but uh, Julius Caesar is this writer. He's always, always writing his campaigns, supposedly. And uh, there's just a detail that I thought was uh, comical, which was uh, Caesar's on horseback riding off somewhere. And while he's riding on this horse, he's shouting out dictation. Uh, and we're to imagine there's someone else on horseback feverishly trying to write down <laughs> uh, Julius Caesar's words. And this is supposed to be uh, some of the great, great uh, Latin uh, writing from Julius Caesar. Um, th th those are sort of like larger than life unbelievable, not true, uh, little, little details that, um, that, I, that I, that I, that I liked, I guess. Um, and he doesn't stop. He, he just, he's, he's taken over Rome. He's, he's been running around as the leader of this army and they love him. Now he's in Rome, he's taken over Rome and now he's chasing down Pompey into Spain, and the soldiers are even starting to think that it's 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 too much. There's a great line where one of the Roman soldiers says, "Even this, even the swords get time off. He, he's using us just like uh, armor and equipment. They're just not getting. They're not getting leave." And they don't know what he's doing. Why are we in Spain now? Um, he f finally, after a really exciting uh, confrontation, uh, corners Pompey into his private tent. And Pompey even says something like, is not even my uh, private bedroom off limits or something like that. And in this biography, it ends with Pompey being quite cowardly. He puts on peasant's clothes and runs out of the tent uh, to just be a part of the public. Uh, I'm interested to read uh, the biography of Pompey to see if Plutarch um, sheds a different light on that moment. We get Cleopatra. There, there's the moment where Cleopatra's rolled up in the carpet. <laughs> it's like it's in the biography. Um, and and the death. Uh, the, uh, all, all sorts of other things happen, and I'm really confused about. It's confusing to try to think about all, all these different things, but eventually. Uh, everyone surrounds him at the Senate floor, and uh, he's stabbed, stabbed to death, um, and it goes on from there. But that, 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 that's the, the story. It's just a huge, larger-than-life story, and I, I feel like um, it's not a perfect vision of this man um, through Plutarch's telling. He clearly has faults and limitations. He, he's uh, described as a slight man, so not a uh, huge, hulking Roman centurion. Uh, it's also shown to be quixotic. Uh, <laughs> there's a scene, uh, maybe he's in space, somehow he's out, out in a boat. They're, they're having like one of the um, like a military bat battle out, out, out on the sea. And Caesar does something where like he like swims out to like a canoe or a little little boat, gets on the boat, and a uh, huge tempest roaring in the sea. And uh, the person that's like paddling this boat uh, goes like, well, who are you? And he unveils himself and he's Julius Caesar. And uh, the, the captain... He's like, well, we gotta, we have to turn around, and Julius Caesar, is like, now that I'm on the boat, uh, of course we're gonna be leading to victory. Nothing can happen, 
and then they get splashed around by the ship and other things and eventually have to have to turn around um, now I'm, I'm, I'm hugely interested in hearing what Steve thinks of the biography I, I, I think I, I did it it's, it's hard to try to talk about this stuff because I don't know um, I'm really interested in hearing what Steve has to say and I'm also really interested in reading Suetonius's um, biography of Julius Caesar. I imagine it's going to be more gossipy, more scandalous, um, less glorious. Um, in Plutarch's lives, Julius Caesar is paired with Alexander the Great. Uh, so we have those, those two parallel biographies Put together um, to be compared but also to, to, to share common qualities um, at the end of it I, I, I still don't know was Julius Caesar in the right uh, most of what I what I think about Rome came after Julius Caesar or did he do the worst thing ever? Was he a great military commander or not quite as competent as it, as it comes off? Because th there's questionable moments of decisions that he makes. So uh, I still don't have any clearer picture, but um, that's what I'll, I'll say. This is someone that's uh, reading this and trying to learn and talking about it in real time um, flaws and all so um, let me know if you're reading along let me know if uh, if you already know about Caesar if, if I got anything right or anything wrong um, so leave a comment if you would like uh, I'm looking forward to watching Steve's video of course um, so uh, th thank you for watching and take care